the protein tracker. And then we'll go ahead and save that here. Okay, now you can see that we've created our, our new project here. And let's go ahead and take a look at the project and, and target settings so we can kind of understand how these how these work inside of our project. So first let's look at project here. There's two main tabs. Let me turn off this view. The info and the build settings. The info is pretty basic. You have your deployment target, which is which version of iOS that you're going to be targeting at the project level. What what is a project design. The target, of course, can override this. And uh, you have your configurations, debug, release configurations, and then localization. You can actually add localizations here to provide different localizations for your files. So let's go ahead and look at the build settings. So the build settings are a little bit confusing at first. It takes a little bit to kind of figure out how these work. The best way for me to explain this is to collapse this down to the combined setting and then look at the basic settings. So what we're seeing here is the basic settings for, for the build and what we're looking at is what the effective settings will be. And what the way that these effective settings are derived is it has a default for iOS and then what your project specific settings are get applied and then what is left over or the combination of those two is what, what ends up being shown here. So if I went to the different to the levels tab, you would see here it gets a little bit more confusing, but let me explain to you what each of these tabs does and then it'll make a lot more sense. So what we're looking at here is each one of these is a is a set of settings and they apply in the order from right to left. So if we look at this iOS defaults, these are the defaults for all of these settings for iOS in general, the, the basic standard defaults then your project specific settings get applied on top of this layer and that produces what the resolved settings are. So we can look at some examples here. For example, the iOS default for the architecture is ARM6, but in the project, it's automatically overriding this to standard ARM6, ARM7, and so it resolved to ARM6, ARM7. Uh, in contrast, when we look at iOS defaults for strip linked product, it's yes, we don't specify anything in the project settings, therefore it stays yes. So it's not that complicated, it just it looks a little bit complicated with all this information on the screen. And then of course, we're looking at the basic settings here and there's quite a few of them. For the most part, you're not really gonna need to worry about these. A lot of these are compiler specific settings. If I click all, you'll see that there is even more, quite a large number of settings that it would take you quite a long time to ever figure out what all of these do. But good thing is you don't really need to know. So I haven't really had to mess with pretty much anything in here. Uh, just a few things, just like the targets and the some of the SDK settings. You can also search this, this huge thing here. So that's kind of helpful if you know what setting you're looking for. So then now let's go ahead and look at the target. So target has a few more tabs here but it kind of has the same idea when we get to the settings. So let's look at the, the summary here first. You have your identifier for your app, the version. You'll increment this whenever you deploy a new version of your app. And then devices, you can target iPhone, iPad, or universal. Universal application would, would run on both. The main interface, this you won't have to change. It's gonna be what starts up first in your application as far as the, the view. Support device orientations. You can change this if you're gonna support more than one device orientation. And then the app icons and the launch image. And that is something that we'll discuss a little bit more when we get into the resources, but it allows you to specify what you're gonna use for an app icon or a launch image. If we look at info here, most of this comes from the uh, property file that I'll, I'll show you a little bit, bit later uh, on. It kind of just bubbles up to this level. It's an easier way to to see what the properties are of the target. And then you can have different UTIs that are defined here, which we're not really gonna go into detail on, on that. It's more of an advanced topic, but you typically will not need to mess with anything down here for most applications you'd be building. If we look at the build settings, this again should look familiar from 
at the project level. Now all that we're doing here is just adding one more layer. So if you look here, we still have our iOS default, we have our uh, project level, and now we've got this target level setting, and then what is what it resolves to. So it's the same logic here, it's still from the right to the left of the application, and what's going to happen is iOS defaults get applied first, then Protein Tracker project overrides it, then the target overrides that, and so you can see here where we've got an example of uh, validate build product, and that one is actually taking the target setting, which is overriding the iOS default. So this, this remember, the target is a more specific thing. The project is going to be is going to be the project specific settings, where the target is going to determine the actual product that gets built. And so that's going to be the most specific of all the settings. And if you had multiple targets, you might actually change these settings for the different targets so that it would build correctly for that particular target. Build phases. Here we have uh, the different phases that your project's going to go through or your target's going to go through in this case when it builds. The first is dependencies. This is where you would add other projects or other targets that it depends on. The source code that's going to be compiled. This is typically just automatically added when you add new source files to your project. So you usually don't have to worry about this, but you can manually add them if you want. The linking, this we'll talk about a little bit more when we go into the frameworks, but this is where frameworks are added. And then the resources, and again, these are going to be added automatically when you add new resources to your project, but if you need to, you could manually add them. You can also add build phases that aren't by default here, uh, something to copy files or to run a script or to copy headers. So it's, it's all pretty flexible here with, with the build phases. You can pretty much do whatever you need to do. Then if we look at the build rules here, the easiest way to explain this is basically if you're familiar in Visual Studio with custom tools that to process files, it's kind of the same concept here. Basically, you see that you have these different file types and they have a different tool that is going to process that file. So if we looked at, for example, this nib file compiler for nib files, interface builder files, it's going to use this interface builder nib compiler. And so you can actually add your own here. And the way this works is you can either use source files matching a name, a naming convention, or there's some file types that are already predefined here. For example, C source files. And you can have it processed either using a custom script or a tool that's already defined here. So you could actually type a script or, or use a script file here. So you can make custom handling. If you wanted to implement some kind of DSL or, or something like that, you could easily do that there. So that's pretty much it for the project and target settings. Of course, you can set up multiple targets and you could click add target here to add a new target. And then whichever target you have selected here is which one's going to be built.